Hi, I thought we'd take a look at my Alesis M1 Active 520 USB studio monitor speaker. Um, these are the speakers that I use for all of my video editing, have done for uh, many years now, and I like it not only because they are uh, small and compact, the 520 uh, means it's a 5 inch main driver here, but I like it for the fact that A, it's got the volume uh, and power switch on the front, and I'm always uh, using this, and I don't have to dick around with like the software or an external box or anything like that. Um, it's got the headphones on the front which I uh, use for uh, podcasting and uh, it's USB as the name says. It's actually a USB interface as well which is handy. It just means that there's uh, you know one less box on my bench. I don't need an external DAC or uh, to use the crappy uh, sound card inside the computer, so I rather like these. Um, yeah, there's not too many like uh, USB monitor speakers on the market, and they don't make this one anymore. They do make the 320 USB, which is a three inch uh, driver version, but um, anyway, and I do like the fact that it uses uh, uh, nice beefy XLR connectors for the um, to go to the other speaker. All of the driver is inside this one, the other one is uh, just a speaker, it's got bass boost and uh, a rear port on the thing and also uh, tonally I really like these because I do video editing where like speech is everything like I don't have any music I don't do any music editing or anything like that and uh, apparently the crossover in these has been designed to avoid the mid-range of the uh, voice so you know they're potentially a bit better than uh, some others on the market in terms of uh, voice reproduction and stuff like that anyway I think they're a cool little monitor speaker and as is typical for these uh, studio monitor speakers they're uh, screwed in around here into the MDF uh, cabinet shouldn't have to take off any of the inner ones that's just holding like the power amp uh, PCB and the heat sink and all that sort of jazz in there and the various input connectors so oh boy there we go we are oh, we're in like Flynn they just leave enough room to swing it out oh barely and we can see the uh, damper material Inside here, very common, uh, 4 ohm 30 watt driver. I'm not sure if Elisus uh, actually make them or not, or whether where they get them from, no idea. And the uh, tweeter up the top, let's get all the cables out. Looks like they got some uh, connectors on them. Hopefully we can just disconnect them. Actually, this all looks rather nice. Look at this, nice uh, shielded transformer here. Um, nice mains connection, uh, mains earth connection down there. Uh, we've got the um, rubber uh, sealing uh, vibration mat under, yep, underneath the uh, transformer. Very nice cable tying on all the mains uh, stuff there. We've got the hot snot sealing right around there. We've got all the um, heat shrink around there. Fantastic. So acoustically, sealed very well and of course it's got the um, seal material around the outside which presses against the rear case because these monitor speakers are uh, you want them to be uh, completely sealed and then all of the engineering goes into uh, designing uh, well a the enclosure shape but also the uh, tuned port on the back or front or wherever it happens to be you can see the uh, Loctite uh, type stuff um, just sealing the all the connectors in there so they don't uh, vibrate off very nice. So that came off easily and now you can see all the uh, filler material inside here. Let's take a look at the uh, tweeter up in there. 5 ohm, 15 watt job, soldered directly on. Everything's looking uh, just fine and dandy. Check it out. They've actually done really well. Look at this huge foam block um, propping this board up. I'm not entirely sure why they've done that, but uh, like to get that height, I'm not sure why they need Oh, that much, okay, they need that much height, yep, due to the connectors at the back, okay. So they're, yeah, they're direct uh, PCB mount, um, very nice. So, yeah, they put a custom block in there, not only for the uh, ceiling, of course, but uh, to, as a um, standoff for that board. And that board looks uh, pretty jazzy, better than the uh, row kits, or rockets, as uh, <laughs> they're apparently supposed to be called. I just call them row kits. Um, and... Double-sided load there, and uh, that looks that looks all right. That looks uh, pretty decent. No soldering and no black gunk of death like in the row kits. I would presume they're just all various uh, op amps and whatnot. And uh, I like how the uh, boards are uh, right angle uh, fillet soldered like that. I use that uh, method quite a lot myself.
And all those chips are all uh, JRC, Japan Radio Corp. They practically own the market for uh, audio op amps, I think. Are they just, like, cheap or are they half decent? I don't know, but they're everywhere. And that's quite a decent uh, heatsink block there. Look at the thickness on that puppy. Wow. Uh-oh, caps. Not exactly Panasonic's. Not sure if you can see that, but that's a TDA uh, 7265, which is a uh, dual channel uh, stereo uh, 25 watt plus 25 watt amplifier. And this is a bit interesting. It's interesting because this is a nominal 30 watt driver and they're only using, they're not actually paralleling those channels to drive it. And here's why. Because if you have a look here, uh, they've got two bridge rectifiers here. Uh, they're going to have one for the woofer and uh, one for the tweeter here. Uh, different level of caps. Look, uh, we've got the uh, smaller caps there. That would be for the tweeter. The reason they have two of them is because we've got two different uh, channels there. Because you've got to remember, this is not a single channel unit. This amplifier board here actually uh, drives the other speaker as well. The other speaker doesn't contain any of this circuitry at all. It's ju it just got the port and the filler material and the speakers. Although it does actually claim 30 watts per speaker which matches up with the uh, 30 watt rating on the um, main woofer over here but that's like per speaker it doesn't actually break that down into like 30 watts plus 15 watts uh, for example for the tweeter so whether or not that's total power that would make sense but if they are if it is actually capable of uh, doing 30 watts then you've only got a 25 watt amplifier on there and they use the same TDA chip uh, for both channels they're reusing their bill of materials there Eh, why not um, you know it probably doesn't cost a huge amount extra and um, just saves on the bomb and everything else so and that TDA driver chip at uh, 25 watts because it's not capable of 30 at 25 it's actually uh, nominally 10% distortion too so it like they're really like underpowered the amplifier in theory anyway Aha, uh -huh. closer inspection of the data sheet, the good old uh, music power output spec with the asterisk next to it. Um, that's rated for 32 watts, so meh, okay. And as is common in all this uh, sort of gear, single-sided board, it looks like it's uh, double-sided there, but that's not. That's actually uh, just the traces on the uh, bottom side just uh, showing through. It's actually a single-sided board. Um, got a quite a few, like a whole unpopulated section here, so I'm not sure what that's for. Probably some additional uh, feature or model or something like that, but I thought there was only the standard one and the USB one. Hmm. And there's our USB input board down there. You can see it's all like gunked around there to uh, seal that up. So uh, none of the air escapes and um, probably uses, I don't know, some Cirrus Logic uh, USB to audio uh, chipset, you know, one of those generic ones. I like the fact, though, that they've added this shielding board between the mains wire in here. Look, they've actually earthed that. That's, that's a nice attention to detail. I like that. Now they do actually have some uh, gunk on the board here and, and right up in there, I'm not sure, next to the connector there. That's to uh, keep the connector in place, but uh, I'm not measuring any problems on that at all. So there's nothing wrong with using gunk on your board as long as it doesn't become um, hydroscopic and uh, conduct like they did in the uh, Rokit ones. Anyway, I am generally uh, very impressed by the build quality in this, these Alesis uh, monitors. They're it's ahead of the uh, Rokit slash Rocket ones, definitely. It, even ignoring the Black Gunk of Death, the build quality is just, it, it's better. The Rokits were okay, but uh, they were good, but these are, I think these are a step above. There you go for all you uh, driver aficionados. Um, no idea who manufactures that at all, but uh, you know, it's nothing special.